All right. Good morning, everybody. Uh, thanks for joining us today on this lovely day outside. Um, nice dreary day. Um, we're going to get kicked off here in just a few minutes for our June finance officer webcast on June 21st. Um, we're letting everybody in and everybody's kind of flooding in from the lobby. So let's make sure we get everybody in before we start. Um, a reminder, as always, we're recording the mess this meeting, so we'll be able to um, send this out if there's anything you want to review. Um, should have already got the PowerPoint this morning, um, so you can follow along um, as we go through. Um, I'm thinking everybody that we have online is in, so we're going to go ahead and get started. Uh, last reminder is at the top, I believe you still have access to the chat feature, so if you want to ask a question, you can put it in the chat box and we'll do our best to get you an answer before we get uh, before we go offline today. And if not, we'll send one directly to you. So let's uh, get going here. Get my computer going. All right. We have a, sh a short agenda today. We'll roll through some things and then we'll um, have questions and answers at the end. And I think we're going to sh start off with the uh, combo of Robin and Robin this morning. So Robin, we'll hand it up to you. Thank you very much, Jesse. Good morning, everyone. It is raining nicely here. And before we started uh, and jumped online with you, we were all talking about our flowers and our yards and our tomatoes. And so um, rain is a good thing. If I had my preference, it would happen every night from uh, midnight to 6 a.m. But uh, it doesn't work out that way. So we have to have a little bit during uh, the day for us. And, and I hope your summer's going well. I know that this is a time that when lots of school district staff are getting a little bit of a break, um, we know that you as finance officers are continuing to work and having to do the things that you are doing to continue to support your local school district. So we really appreciate that. Um, here in OFO, we are doing the same things right now. Um, there's not really a downtime for us either. And, and so we appreciate all of the work that you're doing. Um, my portion of today's presentation, we're going to talk about ESSER funds and really give you an update on ESSER 1. We're going to talk about a little bit about ESSER 2 and ARP ESSER. And so if we can just move to the first slide and we'll jump right in. First, I want to express my appreciation on behalf of the department and also on behalf of your local school districts and uh, students and staff there about your management of ESSER $1. Um, you'll remember our allocation for Kentucky was about $193 million. And at that time, we thought, wow, that's a lot of money. Um, little did we know that ESSER 2 and ARP ESSER would be right on the heels and there would be more funds available. The grant period ended on September 30th of 2022 and we've gotten through the liquidation period of January 28th of 2023. We did not have any late liquidation requests uh, for ESSER 1 because at the time that we even knew that late liquidation was a possibility, districts have done an excellent job in expending their dollars and we really didn't need it um, for either the districts or at the state level. But you can see um, just a reminder on the screen on how much was distributed to our districts, the state set aside and state administration. And at the very bottom, um, again, my congratulations because US, uh, the Kentucky Department of Education only returned about $15,000 of that $193 million to US Ed. And so that was just a little bit of funds that were remaining. So again, you all did a great job. Pats on the back to everyone. Um, for the excellent management of funds and getting those to support your schools and districts during really challenging time when you're trying to figure out how to go to school and keep instruction going and at the same time expending these dollars for um, health and safety instruction for students. Next slide, please. Um, we are also very appreciative of the work that our finance officers and other um, staff in your districts that work on annual performance reports for ESSER. Uh, anytime you get money from the U.S. government, of course, they want you to send in what you spend it on and how you're doing. And so uh, we really appreciate the efforts in helping us to make timely submissions of our annual reports for our state. For those ESSER dollars, of course, KDE is making those reports, including state information and local school district information. And then for the gear reporting, uh, we work with the uh, Cabinet for Education and Workforce Development. So when you provide information to us or we provide information, it goes up to the Cabinet and they're filing that report on our behalf. 
We do know, and they have already set correction periods um, for ESSER and GEAR. Uh, we already know, based upon these little um, things that pop up on the screen when we file our reports, that we're going to have to make some corrections. So wanted to make you aware of just the correction periods in the event that we need to reach out to your district and, and again, seek your assistance with some corrections um, at that time. You'll see that starts uh, July 3rd and goes rolls all the way through September 7th. So we'll be kind of um, popping in and out of the correction periods. So just uh, wanted to put that on your radar. I know that lots of people will try to take some time off and I encourage that. Um, for both district and staff here at KDE, but wanted to have these on your calendars as reminders. Let's go to the next slide, please. OK, so let's turn now. Um, ESSER 1's behind us, at, at least for the most part. ESSER 2 and ARP ESSER are now um, in full swing. Uh, as a reminder, the ESSER 2 grant period ends September 30th of 2023. So as soon as uh, we get students and staff back into our school districts in the fall, it'll be the winding down of ESSER 2. Um, that date on the screen, November 17th, is the date for all reimbursement requests to KDE. Um, we do have more time for ARP ESSER grant um, expenditures. That's September 30th of 2024. I wanted to give you an update through May of 2023. Districts have been reimbursed for 85.5% of ESSER 2 allocations. Of course, uh, the amount was a lot larger for ESSER 2, um, about $928 million that came to us. So when we think of the math there, uh, we still have a bit of money that is out there. And I've talked to several finance officers. I know that you all are expending those dollars. Um, but I want to want to make sure that it is high on your radar and, and I know it is for for many of you. It's high on your radar. Um, districts have been and, and then districts have also been reimbursed for 72.3 percent of ESSER 2 LEA state set aside funds. If you'll think back um, and sometimes it does get a little foggy because it seems like it was forever ago um, that the LEA set aside that that number represents was for that uh, sort of carve out that the state did for direct services to students where we took a portion of the state money and said you can apply for some of this money too provided you provide direct services to your students and provided that you get students back into the uh, in-person instruction and many of you took advantage of that um, but it looks like 72% uh, of that has been reimbursed. Um, we know that at the time that we took this snapshot, um, districts are very busy with end of year closeout. So we understand you have other things on your plate right now. Um, we also have similarly other things on our plate. And in fact, if you are now sending us a draw request, we have stopped processing of draw requests from now until June 30th. So if you're sending stuff in and you're not seeing it come back very quickly, it's because we are we are also in fiscal year in closeout. If you have a unique situation, you can always reach out to us. Um, but come July 1st, we would expect to see a lot of uh, draw requests coming to us and we'll pick that back up and really start processing um, your reimbursements again. Uh, very important, if you don't plan to use all your ESSER 2 funds, if you would notify Robin Morley at this email address on your screen as soon as possible, we're trying to get a feel for how much might still be out there that you do not intend to use, that you don't think that you're going to have the ability to use. So there are some districts out there with fairly large balances right now. Um, and we shared this information also with your superintendents on our superintendent webcast yesterday. So you might have a few of them asking you questions about your balances in ESSER 2 as we roll forward. Next slide, please. OK, I think we talked a little bit about this in the May webcast with you, um, but wanted to also get into a little more detail. Again, we shared this with your superintendents yesterday, so I'll always try to make you aware of what we're sharing with them. Um, liquidation extensions. Um, 
So there is a very narrow, limited opportunity for uh, liquidation extension requests for ESSER II. Um, let's, let's revisit just quickly um, sort of the September 30th. You have to have everything obligated. You have to have contracts finalized, signed, and then you have your normal 120 days of liquidation. Late liquidation allows for an additional extension period of up to 14 months. So if you need that, if you think you might need it, um, that would allow an extension to up to 14 months through March 31st of 2025. Um, in SR1, again, we didn't need that because districts had done such a great job in expending this do their dollars. And we do expect um, that districts will, for the most part, do the same thing and expend all their funds by September 30th. So this would be for very limited and narrow circumstantial exceptions um, for late liquidation requests. It is the responsibility of the state agency to make that application to US Ed for late liquidation. So uh, we would, work with the district to kind of get to a point that we believe that your request is substantiated and supported by evidence. And then we would make that request on behalf of the district to US Ed. Um, you do have to make sure that all your prerequisites are in place. You do have those contracts finalized and signed before September 30th. And uh, we've included some guidance at the bottom of this page if you'd like to read a little bit more about the details of late liquidation. Next slide, please. Um, I think it is also important that late liquidation uh, extension requests should be for things really that were outside the control of the district. So challenges that you are facing, which are basically not your fault, it's things that some external uh, uh, external factor is impacting your ability to expend these dollars because overall uh, US Ed really wants us to spend dollars for the benefit of our students and staff and districts um, in, a, in a fairly urgent manner. So, but there again, there may be a few exceptions. Um, so late liquidation cannot be for things that are more like time of services. So activities where you're paying your teacher's salaries or, um, um, you know, additional staff that have come on board to help your districts or paying for travel of an employee. So those more just in time services, you can't ask for a late liquidation request. Um, one example might be, it, let's say if you have ordered HVAC, it hasn't come in due to supply chain. Uh, issues or labor shortages or something like that, again, completely not the district's fault, then that might be something that could be considered. Um, also, we would encourage you to, to make sure that it's something that could reasonably be completed within the extension timeframe as a complete project. We would ask for extensive documentation if you're asking for a liquidation extension, but we would work with the districts on uh, requesting and asking for the things that we would need. Um, next slide, please. Uh, I guess I should have also said, just because you run out of time isn't a reason for a late liquidation. Um, so it again, we're looking for those unusual external circumstances that are preventing you from uh, being able to complete your project. Those that are already underway, you're moving forward and something has happened or intervened. If you have a need, if you have any interest in talking to us about the opportunity for a late liquidation extension request, we'd ask you to send an email to Katina Gar. This is the same uh, email address that we had given you in the May meeting. We'd ask you to do a brief statement about the nature of the project, why you need this extension. Please include those external factors or circumstances in that need and how much money might be needed. And this is not the application itself. This would just be your expression of interest. Next slide, please. Um, people are always already looking forward to ARP and whether we could do the same thing. These, This is 
especially true for those larger projects that you're thinking, okay, I'm, I need to spend ESSER 2 and ARP ESSER um, dollars to complete a project. Liquidation extensions are not currently available for those ARP ESSER funds. Um, while we think it could be possible, we won't know for sure based upon the pattern of US Ed and kind of when they've shared this with us. Uh, we won't know until spring of next year. So uh, we encourage people not to think that that will be a given, um, but we will know next spring. And I've included a quote from the US Department of Education really about continuing to encourage states and local agencies to obligate and liquidate those funds with urgency. They want us to spend those dollars for student academic recovery and mental health. Uh, next slide, please. I think that's all that I have. Um, Jesse, are we doing questions in the chat if people have questions? I think so, but we don't see any yet. Okay, great. Um, I appreciate the time that um, we've been allowed to share with you this morning. Again, we know you are very busy. Typically, we don't even do a June or a July webcast for finance officers, but due to the nature and sort of the timing of these ESSER dollars and the expiration quickly upon us, I did ask the team to, to put this on calendars for today. So we'd have a few minutes just to remind you to keep your eye on those ESSER $2 and get those expended as quickly as possible. So I'll throw it back to Jesse and uh, we'll continue. Appreciate so much that all you do for your local school districts. Hey, Robin. Um, I think now we have a couple of other um, updates and things throughout the office. And so I think we're transitioning over to Ann, who's going to talk to us about some transportation um, information. Um, Ann, are you on with us? And may have gone through the webinar, the webcast. And so, um, and if you can hear, see if you can come back through the webcast, uh, not the, the, the internal link. Um, let's skip over Anne right now and we'll come back to her. If that's okay. Check and see if we can get Anne in. Um, we're going to skip through two slides and kind of, you know, we'll go backwards here in a minute. So, um, I think we're going to go on through and we're going to transition now to Jackie. So Jackie's going to talk about some um, audit reminders and other updates. So go for it, Jackie. Thank you, Jesse. Um, we just have a few updates and audit uh, important dates to go through. On June 15, the uh, State Committee for School District Audits, SESDA, approved to or voted to approve all the audit contracts. So if any district would like a copy of the signed copy of their audit contract, please send us a request at the email shown on the screen. October 1st, regular audit extensions are due, or due dates are due by this date of extensions, and they should be also forwarded to the same email address as shown on the screen. And November 15, the audit report, audited AFR, and audit balance sheet are required to be submitted unless an extension has been received and approved by KDE. Desk review results of the fiscal year 21-22 audit districts will be released soon from the state auditor's office. And in these audits, are going to be classified in one of three categories. One being acceptable, two being acceptable with deficiencies, and the third being technically deficient. And it's basically the responsibility of the auditor if an audit report is classified as technically deficient to correct all these deficiencies and reissue a corrective report. What they do is they'll correct those and they'll be sent to both KDE and the district. Um, if the district does not receive one, please contact, contact us once it's been resubmitted and we'll get one uh, sent to you guys. But districts should also be mindful to ensure that the records reflect the revised audit reports and what's in there. Next screen is budget collateral fidelity bonds. The window for both the fidelity bonds and budget collateral was open on June 1st. And all this information is due to KDE on July, July 1st. And if you have any questions over any of these, um, there's detailed instructions on our website, and the links to those websites are shown on your screen. And you can also just forward your questions if you have questions over those instructions to me. Now, a side note, as of yesterday at 5:30, I received 85 fidelity bond submissions and 70 fidelity 
or flooded collateral submissions. So there's still quite a few of you out there that I just need some, but thank you to those who submit them pretty quickly. And I'll send another reminder email out next week just to remind everyone that those have to be into us by July 1st. Last reminder is House Bill, sorry, House Bill 522 is a, it goes into effect on June 29th. And what it does is increase the thresholds in the model procurement and bid law from 30,000 to 40,000. So we just want to remind everyone to work with your management and legal counsel to update your policies and procedures accordingly. So 40,000 is being shown and utilized. Any questions for her, Jay? All right. I don't know if we've been able to get in. Yes, I opened up her mic and camera, so she should be able to. Oh, there she is. Good morning. Hi. Good morning. That's fine. I was like, oh my gosh, everything's leaved out. I don't know how to get it on. Hey, we've got you now. So here we go. Thank uh, you. Thanks for joining us, Anne. So, Anne, go for it. Good morning. We just wanted to do a quick, a quick reminder that the transportation forms are now open and seek the transportation year in form, the vocational form, and your transportation mileage form um, are all due no later than July 30th. And again, they're open currently in seek, so you're able to submit between now and July. And if you have any um, questions or problems, feel free to reach out to me and I'll be glad to help you. Thank right. you. Thanks, Sam. All right, um, let's see. I hate to make you dizzy, but we're gonna roll back through uh, Jackie's slides since we've already hopped over them. And I think that's all we have on this end. Um, we got any questions anywhere? Yeah. Okay, we're not seeing any questions on our end. Anybody from KDE received any other questions outside of the system? Yeah. Not I. Okay. I think we're good to go. Um, as always, reach out to us if you have any questions. We'll be able to share this recording with you afterwards. And um, hope you have a great Wednesday. Hope you have a great Wednesday. Thanks so much. Y'all have a good one.